London has fallen. Make no mistake about that. When we gave our capital city to Sadiq Khan, to a Muslim mayor who was stood on a platform with Islamic extremists, London fell for good. I can't walk through the streets of my hometown without being spat at in my face by dirty Muslim extremists. I can't walk through the streets of East London without being attacked. I have to take security guards with me. This is no joke. People don't realise what is going on in London, what is going on in Bradford, what's going on in Birmingham. I'm telling you now, I'm pleading with you now, do not let it happen here. In fact, do you know what? I won't bloody let it happen here. How about that? Yeah. I want this to sink in, folks. Jada Franzen sentence over Belfast Islam speech. In fact, print that for me, guys. And, and think about that. In the supposed place, the birthplace of the Magna Carta, a woman, a legal scholar, a political activist, she goes and gives a speech about the danger of expansionist Islam, how it takes over your government, how it takes your speech, and how then it promotes terrorism and no-go zones and Sharia law. And for telling the truth, she's arrested. Even if it was a lie under free speech, she has that right. Info War. The most banned network in the world. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back live broadcasting worldwide. And we have a special guest joining us that ties into all of this. She's been found guilty of thought crime in England now. She just was found guilty of thought crime, I'm told, in Ireland. Jada Franson is a very uh, well-spoken, awesome person. She's headed up one of the largest nationalist groups in the UK. She's also obviously f friends with Tommy Robinson, who's been in prison for covering a child kidnapping ring that was convicted. So instead of being carried through the streets of England on people's shoulders, he's in prison again for the third time. But you read the Bible and you see what happened to all the saints. That's what happened to them. Christ says, if you love me, the world will hate you. Jada Franson is a British political activist and devout Christian. She practiced and studied law for many years prior to moving into political activism. And she was incarcerated last year for exposing four Muslims who gang raped a child. She served nine months in jail in England, six weeks to which she was in solitary confinement. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. Uh, people that made, remember last week? Let's pull that up. The guy, it was a black guy. He had goofy looking hair. Mad scientist. He, he committed a horrible crime. They had a wanted poster out for him. And they had another poster of him. And they said, if you make fun of it, we'll arrest you. So they're just always pushing the envelope, these fascists that call themselves liberal. Earlier this year, Jada was found guilty of multiple counts of hate speech for anti-terrorist speech she gave in Northern Ireland and is set to appeal her convictions on September 2nd. That's why she's in Ireland right now. In 2017, for being retweeted three times by President Donald Trump, Jada was accused of causing a breakdown in the relationship between Number 10 and the White House by MSM and was subsequently purged from Twitter. But you can still find her at jadafranson.online. Celebrate these independent URLs like drudgereport.com and dailycaller.com and gatewaypundit.com and newswars.com and, and the great thing that Carpe Donkum started, memewar.com, because we're going back to the decentralization. I wish I would have listened to Drudge more. We listen some more than others. That's why we're still here. Uh, and the listeners understand that. So jadafranson.online, people should check that out. Jada, great to have you on. I think you've been on the shows before, but I followed your work so long, it all blends together. But uh, good to have you here with us. Well, what do you want to tackle first? Well, hi, Alex. It's good to be on. Um, I really don't know. I mean, <laughs> I think there's just been so much going on since... Um, we were last in contact, and I think you and I are probably experiencing some of the same difficulties. You know, the censorship, um, being absolutely demonized and dehumanized by the state, the, the, the police state that we live in. Um, it's absolutely chronic. I mean, Tommy is rotting in a dangerous prison, one of the worst high security prisons in the world right now. He's rotting in it for exposing pedophiles and getting him convicted. I mean, the, the 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 pedophile problem itself. I mean, you got put in prison for it. Tell people briefly about that. 
Yeah, so last year I was I was incarcerated for nine months. So basically just write the whole year off because I dared to go and expose a gang of Muslim rapists. A child went into a takeaway store, asked for directions. Instead of giving her directions, they kidnapped her and they raped her four times each. These men are now in jail. They're serving 14 years each. But because I went and notified the neighbours that these men were on bail, um, I was put in jail. They accused me, first of all, of um, incitement. And then they said that the charges were causing these rapists harassment, alarm and distress by notifying the neighbours that they were still operating the takeaway shop that this child had been kidnapped and gang raped in. It's exactly. So it's almost like the blueprint of Tommy Robinson's case. Um, exposed gang rapist gets put in jail. Well, I was about to say, that's one of the reasons he's in prison for contempt. We've played the video many times politely saying, you've been convicted, how do you feel? They tell him, screw your mother, you were born out your mother's ass. All these horrible things I won't repeat, but that was some of the yeah. lighter stuff. And he just asked them politely, so he goes to jail for, what is it now, nine months or something. I mean, just like you got. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fortunately, Tommy got nine months. He'll only have to serve approximately 10 weeks, so he will be out um, next month. So, but you know. By the way, any quite, word on how he's doing? Because I've got his cell phones and stuff, but his family is not in any of this. I, I, I apologize. Finish your point. When we come back. I'll ask if you have any word on Tommy. Well, yeah, no, I was just going to say, um, as you quite rightly pointed out, Tommy is being held in the most dangerous prison in the UK. Now, this seems to be a strategy of the state because they put me in a Cat A prison, which is full of Islamic terrorists one of whom was serving 15 years for plotting to cut my head off, along with Katie Hopkins. Um, she was actually so they're trying, Stay there. They're trying to give you a death sentence because, I'm just saying, I mean, women like you is what's going to save the world. I I'm not hitting on you, I'm married, but it's so sexy. I mean, you know, what you've done for your country and humanity. It's just, we, if we had women like you and men like you, we would not be in this problem. And people like Tommy, I just admire you. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, she's got tons of these videos on her website of Islamists viciously attacking Brits. When they try to say we're not going under Sharia law, we're tired of the child grooming gangs. Under Islam, because it's it's medieval, most of these countries run sex dungeons. They have slavery where women are still sold. I mean, I could pull up Business Insider, Reuters, Al Jazeera, showing women and children being sold as slaves in at least six countries right now. But but I'm digressing. She's a very well spoken lady. She's amazing. Jada Franson. Jada Franson. Dot online, everybody bookmark it and share it. And there's so many of these heroes. I wanted her on like a year ago, but I guess she was in jail. That's why I couldn't get her. I'm like, get her on. She's amazing. Oh, she's in jail. But she's here now, and, you, and you've just been convicted again in Ireland, I'm told. You're appealing that. But just recap what it's like over there, because I have family that goes to England quite often. I've been there four or five times, I guess more than that. But it, London's a no-go zone. And, and now it's even mainstream news that much of Europe's a no-go zone. And that even if black rappers go in there, Islamists attack them. I mean, because they understand tribalism. They understand taking over. That's what Islam has done in 1,400 years. It took over half the world already. Yeah, London is um, London's completely gone. London's my hometown, right? So, and I have to say, you, you hit the nail on the head there. It used to be the case, I remember when Donald Trump said about no-go zones and the whole world went mad and said he's making it up and he's lying and he's, he's evil. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, there are fewer uh, safe zones. There are far more no-go zones, particularly on the mainland of the UK, so England, than there are where you find indigenous Brits that can walk freely. And like you say, it doesn't matter whether it's a white Christian or a black rapper. Um, you have to respect the fact that you are in a Sharia controlled zone. And that means, you know, they, they, they're carrying out Sharia patrols on the streets of our country. And why not? You know, the state are allowing them to. This is, a, this is far bigger than just a few Muslims getting carried away. This has been orchestrated and aided and abetted 
by the state. So um, what, what do you do when you've got a government that wants to silence those who are trying to tell the truth and expose the truth? My biggest crime was exposing everything that you just watched there, which was the fact that you're attacked for being Christian, the, the fact that you there are no-go zones. That's Berry Park in Luton, which is Tommy Robinson's hometown. We're going to play I mean, the audio of the next segment, but it, it's just incredible. Trying to walk down the street with a cross, they're playing call to prayer. There's Islamic stuff everywhere. The sight of a cross, it's like vampires going crazy when they see it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it's I like being faced with Satan himself. You can see the reaction of these people, and it's all its all there in the scriptures, you know, that I've studied the Quran because I think you need to know your enemy, and it quite clearly states that the most offensive name to Allah on the day of judgment will be the one who calls himself the King of Kings. If you are for Christ and you come up against these people, you will see a level of barbarism and evil that... Um, I have to say, no longer shocks me. I think I'm immune to it, but it certainly shocks me when I, I started this journey of political activism. What triggered you to get involved? Tell us about yourself. Um, well, I was I, I studied and practiced law for years, right? And I I did so in London. So whilst doing so, the seven seven bombings happened, and I remember everybody in London would drive like three car lengths behind a bus just in case it blew up after that attack. Um, and so I got to thinking, well, what's motivating these people? We'd already had 9-11. I was a child when that happened. Um, but, you know, I, I, start, I, I like to look into to people's motives for these kind of heinous acts. And so then I went from, uh, I had my own business after I left law, and I went from just running a successful business to shutting the whole thing down and completely dedicating my life to political activism. Because I tell you what the key trigger moment for me was, um, coming home, turning the TV on and seeing Lee Rigby's killer with an axe, a, a meat cleaver in his hand after he just decapitated one of our Queen soldiers on the streets of our capital. For me, anyone who then didn't go out and buy a Quran or read it online for free um, after he said he was doing what Allah told him to do, I'm sorry, but ignorance isn't bliss. And now it's only gotten worse. Mild criticism of Islam, you get arrested. Speaker's Corner, there for hundreds of years. Any speech is allowed, but criticism of Islam. And I've seen the videos. The Islamic preachers have TV shows on broadcast TV saying, kill, we're going to overthrow England, we're going to take their women, we're going to murder the police. That's allowed. Uh, it's just, why, why is the British government so in love with Islam? I really don't know. I mean, I can't answer that. They, they are... The appeasement is so overwhelming. It's a complete two-tier system. Like, the indigenous Brits are second-class citizens. We are second-class citizens. And we know it, and they know it. So they know that they can push the boundaries. When we have a mosque on every corner, in every town, in every city. We have Sharia courts. We have a parallel legal system in the UK that Muslims can lean on. So Muslims have their own legal system, which means that women are being violently abused by their husbands, and the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, are being told by these Sharia councils, leave this to us, we will deal with it our way, which is basically to penalise the woman after she's been beaten by her husband. And by the way, I've got to apologise to Glenn Beck here. Because Glenn got jealous of me and attacked me and said a lot of lies and things, but whatever. I would hear Glenn Beck talking about Sharia law, now it was coming and no-go zones 15 years ago in the caliphate, and I thought there's no way that's really going on. And it wasn't until about five years later I found out it was true. And it's just, yeah. it's because it's so crazy to hear all this and then to actually see Western governments doing it, but it's because they've committed themselves to evil and an anti-Christian project. Why do you think the global system, the global corporations, are so against Christianity? Um, because I think, well, I think it's been a well-orchestrated plan. Do you know what I would actually say? that I think initially there were certain plans that were in place and they were run by institutions that now have pretty much folded. And what we're left with now is a dangerous elite who are very much on the left. But I don't actually think that they've got a, a, a great master plan apart from just the destruction of, of the West. I mean, they, they see the kind of the indigenous Brit, the white West, as completely evil. They would like to... I mean, we, we, we see this in the States as well. I've seen some of the lunacy that goes on over across the pond that you guys are having to listen to. You know, it's all about reparations. It's all about, um, you know, create divide and rule. And that's 
the government's ultimate plan, and they're succeeding very well. They formed these ghettos. They are they are aiding and abetting the whole situation on the mainland, and um, it's ultimately to destroy the family, destroy Christianity, and. I mean, it's only going to lead to civil unrest. I hate to say it. That's, That's what I was going to ask next. What does it lead to with our guest, Jaden Franson? Jaden Franson on online. I'm Alex Jones with Newswars.com. Please spread that link. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alex Jones, your host. We're broadcasting worldwide. Infowars.com and Newswars.com, again, are the sites. We're talking to Jada Franson, who has been a political prisoner, an activist, just exposing the fact that 1,400 years ago, Islam started right in the middle of what's Saudi Arabia today. Within 100 years, it had already pushed out its borders thousands of miles in every direction, and it took 400 years of Europe almost being taken over before they fought back, and it took them 500 years to even retake Spain. 500 years, millions dead, millions over the years. 140 plus million Hindus killed by Muslims. India used to be almost triple the size it is. Went all the way to Iran. Was Pakistan, was Kashmir, was part of China. Not anymore. Because they push, they expand, and they believe they have a right to rule the world. And the system is coming in and pushing for a total takeover. That's what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, uh, let's go ahead now and go back to Jada Franson. You, you, you've got the floor. You've got some of the clips they've got. You can call for those clips. Uh, radio listeners have heard the audio, but we've been also playing videos over you of just you being attacked for having a cross and walking through the Islamic areas because this isn't England anymore. They plant the flag. They know their power. They're unified, and they almost have taken the planet over. So, uh, and, and they know they've got the British government, so there's a real, like you said, a real arrogance here. Yeah, and you know what? Um, yeah, the, the whole crux of the matter is it's not even them that's the danger. It's not them that's the most dangerous component in the whole mixture. It's the state. It's the government. Because what we have, you know, if it weren't for the government bringing these people in, they wouldn't be taking these liberties. It's as simple as that. If you don't invite all of these people into your home, then they don't come in and put your slippers on and get in your bed. This is this is the British government's fault through and through and through. And now what we're looking at is anybody who has dared to raise their head over the parapet and say, hold on a minute, this is not right. A million children in England have been groomed and raped by Muslim men. That's not normal. Um, Sharia courts with a parallel legal system, not normal. Mosques on every corner, preaching about beheading the disbelievers, that's not normal. So the, the, there's a few of us in England that have dared to, to raise our heads up and say, we're going to speak out about this, um, myself being one and Tommy Robinson being another, and he's currently serving time in jail. I'm facing another two years on the 2nd of September. We've been uh, removed from every social media platform. Mark Zuckerberg put a statement out in April um, stating that I'm banned for life from Facebook after I lost three million followers. I'm banned for life under his dangerous individuals policy. Um, and, the, you know, these people can make these statements. They're not held accountable. I've had Theresa May in the Commons calling me a bigot, um, spreading lies. They can say what they like. They're not. There's no one to answer to. Uh, it's absolutely. It, it is a police state over here. Through you know, that's it. We've 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 got to accept that, or we need a revolution. And I just don't know what more it will take for people to to do something. I want to play the video now and 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 have you describe it first, where you've been found guilty of hate speech in Northern Ireland and and, and why you're there now. Describe what's happened there. So I came to Northern Ireland to give a speech at an anti-terror rally, right? So you'd think that that would be pretty um, pretty safe. But no, because I I basically quoted the Quran. I quoted the Quran in that it says that Muslims are obliged to kill non-Muslims. It's not um, an option. It's mandatory. It's obligatory. Jihad is the most talked about concept in the Quran. And I stated what the Quran says. I was arrested in England. I was taken, I was driven to Liverpool, taken from London, taken on a ferry overnight to Belfast, where they arrested me. The charge sheet said 
that I gave a speech that was anti-Islamic in nature, right? And I've just been convicted on approximately 10 counts of hate speech. Now, I'm sorry, but for me, that's blasphemy law. I don't know whether I'm absolutely losing my mind here. But if I gave a speech that was anti-Islamic in nature in Pakistan, maybe I could expect to be arrested. This is the United Kingdom. Um, and, and Northern Ireland really is the last stronghold of Britain. So if they're doing that here, the UK is gone. You know, I'm sitting here in late 2019. I look at that BBC headline. Can we put that back up, please? And this is the so-called left, the liberals, the West. Jada Franson sentenced over Belfast Islam speech. So it's Tommy Robinson for exposing a pedophile ring that was convicted and just asking him questions as they walked in nicely. And then it's you for giving a speech about how under Islam they call for jihad and a takeover. You know, it was Obama years ago that said, oh, none of these Al-Qaeda or ISIS attacks are Islam. Don't say it's Islam. So the media wouldn't say it's Islam. So let's put that back up full screen. I want this to sink in, folks. Jada Franzen sentence over Belfast Islam speech. In fact, print that for me, guys. And, and think about that. In the supposed place, the birthplace of the Magna Carta, a woman, a legal scholar, a political activist, she goes and gives a speech about the danger of expansionist Islam, how it takes over your government, how it takes your speech, and how then it promotes terrorism and no-go zones and Sharia law. And for telling the truth, she's arrested. Even if it was a lie under free speech, she has that right. So when we come back... We're going to play that clip. It's just incredible. And then Tommy Robinson asked for asylum here from Trump. And, you know, we weren't able to get that through to President Trump. And he, he didn't respond. And it's just so scary, folks. Is there anywhere to run? I mean, even if you want to run, there's nowhere to run. There's 1.8 billion Islamicists. They're taking over. They're murdering. They're killing. All these deceived people bringing in these systems are losing their souls, their independence. I used to always read that, and, and I saw it in life that was good and evil, but I didn't get people that turn over to evil lose their independence. They lose their discernment. They lose their souls. They join with Sauron. They join with the devil. They turn their will over to it. They become slaves of it. They have power. But the power is not theirs. You know, the greatest victim of Islam is Islam. If you look at a map of Islam, it, it controls more than half the world. 1.8 million Muslims right now. And powerful corporations allied with them. Moving against the planet. And yeah, a lot of Muslims just want to have a life and are nice people, but they're not the leadership. And it's Muslims that are more bullied and controlled than I say any other group. Jada Franson, political president. We're going to play a clip here in a moment. You've been convicted again of thought crime. If you lose your appeal in the... Uh, it, 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 were you convicted in Northern Ireland or in Ireland general? Uh, how, how much prison time are you facing? Ireland, and this time I'm looking at two years if I'm convicted and, and imprisoned. Um, I did nine months last year in England... Uh, so now this would be served in Northern Ireland. So are they expecting a backlash to this or anything? With the BBC licking its lips that you're convicted of giving a speech? I mean, don't they know that the optics of this, the West supposedly honoured free speech? Oh, look, they, they absolutely love it. I mean, the BBC... And the BBC is a public-funded corporation. We pay taxpayers, I don't, but taxpayers pay for it, right, through a licence fee. I've told people for years, boycott that licence. They, they peddle just the most disgusting lies, the narrative. And, and it's not just that. They also peddle a narrative that is actively promoting the erosion of Christian and British traditions and heritage. Anything that is... Uh, required to sustain a nation and its people, um, they erode and they promote the complete opposite of what British values are. So they promote abortion, they promote, they're really going to town on this LGBTQP agenda. Um, and so, of course, anybody who's a, a free speaker, a free thinker, they absolutely rejoice when they see the likes of myself 
uh, incarcerated. So I'm sure they well, they never they never miss any of my trial dates. I'm sure they'll be there for this one to cover it as well. I mean, I'll say what they're doing here is still terrible, but it's not nine months in prison like you spent or, or, or Tommy has had to go through. But still, they're, they're arguing, your lawyers argue, it's freedom of expression, plus it's true. And they literally say to hell with the freedom of expression. I mean, let me tell you, I know this is all EU-type law, but the people of Ireland, I know, that, I know they're angry in Scotland and particularly England. What is the sense of the people? Because I have friends and family that go to England a lot. I talk to folks over there, and they say people are madder than ever, and they're really waking up. Is that accurate, or is that is that pie in the sky? Yeah, no, do you know what? I'm pleased to say that we we seem to be getting somewhere. I spent the last six years of activism just basically raising awareness and so through that uh, through my activities it did raise awareness to the point where i was retweeted by president donald trump now that caused mass hysteria over here i mean i'd switch the tv on that morning i was on every single news station across the world my face was everywhere and i was being called worse than evil by city khan Theresa may you know everybody in the house of and all you everybody. did was show muslims around the world destroying christian churches and their own videos they posted and throwing homosexuals off the roof, smashing up statues of the Virgin Mary. I mean, I didn't create these videos. They created the videos. I shared them. Donald Trump shared them. And they said with you were interfering with 10 Downing Street, that, 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 that you having, well, we're supposed to interfere. It's our governments, damn it. I know. Apparently, I caused a breakdown between number 10 and the White House because when Theresa May told Donald Trump, take the retweets down. He told her, I suggest you pay attention to the terrorism that's happening in your capital and leave my Twitter account be. I mean, where where does the British government get off telling the leader of the free world how to use his own Twitter account? And then because he wouldn't remove the retweets, Twitter deleted my account permanently because it was the only way to get them off of his timeline. I mean, they're not just censoring the likes of myself and you, Alex, they're, they're censoring the president of the United States. It's incredible. Jada, let's expand on this. Once they got the pedophile rings, which is all over the British news, for Americans, this Epstein thing is new, but as you know, for 30 years, it's been known that pedophile rings got control. They use it to, to, to blackmail people. They got control of the Catholic Church with it to a great extent. And... So once they capitulated to that, then this evil group behind it is capitulated to Islam, and they even fly back ISIS and Al-Qaeda members and let them come back to England and then give them free welfare better than war veterans get. I mean, they are the most coddled, worshipped, protected group, and it just shows what is the evil at the center of England that is taking control of it? I mean, I mean, how do you describe this pedophilic globalist thing that's there that sucked the energy out of uh, the I England to build the empire at, it, at its expense and is now merging with Islam. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's satanic. There's no other way to rationalize this. You can't, no rational person would actively promote the genocide of its own people. I mean, it, it's just inconceivable. These people are self-serving. They are, they are only concerned with themselves, and many of them are parents, you know? We, we can't... I have people say to me, try and explain, Jada, why the liberal elite are selling us out and their own children into a future which is going to be, uh, you know, bloody unrest and eventually Islamic takeover. And these people are so evil to their core that... All they care about is themselves. All they care about is serving themselves. And so there's a slippery slope. You were saying earlier, you know, actually, they lose the power then because once you turn to evil, all is lost. And so that's why I make it one of my... I mean, I am inspired and, and everything I do, I am powered by God. I'm an extremely faithful person. Without God, I'd be nowhere. And so... I have to. I lean on my faith at every single turn, and believe you me, I've I've needed God throughout these last six years because the persecution um, is is absolutely rife. See, once you step away from good and you embrace evil, you're finished. We have to fight against these people. Well, you're absolutely right, and we've got a few minutes left. Uh, you've been hard to get on the show, I guess, because they're always got you in prison or whatever. What are you doing next? How do people help you? Who's the real resistance in the UK? Any other info on Tommy Robinson? 
So Tommy's just released another letter to say that he's doing better, he's getting his mail now, and actually this weekend, um, I'm over in Northern Ireland, we've got a demonstration organised over here for him, and there are a couple taking place across the mainland as well. They'll all be happening at the same time on Saturday. So if, if anyone who's watching in Northern Ireland, get yourselves over to Belfast and we'll see you there. Um, it's great to hear that he's doing better. Uh, in terms of the resistance, I would say that at the moment it's like the this situation with the social media removal and censorship and coal has really separated the men from the boys. And I'm, I'm talking about myself in that. I'm not a feminist. I'm not going to start screaming that I've just, you know, misgendered myself. But um, look, I think at this time, the, the, the only the strongest will survive because you asked about how people can help me and how people can support me. Well, you can stay in touch with me at jadafranson.online, but at the moment I am unable to obtain a payment processor. I've had absolutely every platform shut me down. And this was ordered by the state so that it's impossible for me to live. And so these are the... These are the issues that I face, you know, day to day. I didn't get into this cause for money. Um, I closed down a very lucrative business to dedicate myself to extremism, being locked up and poverty. But, you know, if you can't live and you can't put, put food in your mouth and you can't keep a roof over your head, then you're absolutely screwed. And they're the well, let me explain that. So First, they attacked me like 20 years ago saying, Jones just wants to make money. So I said, let me show you I can make money and get big. Because I realized I had to be a leader, not just somebody on the air. They wanted to destroy me already. And then when they try to yeah. take everything away from you, you realize money is the power to tell the truth. So we don't worship money. We don't sell out to money. But we need a bunch of money to stay in the game and fight those that have sold out for it. First, they try to take it away to make us grovel. Then we don't. Then they try to fully destroy us. So absolutely, people should go and support you on your site. They're trying to take our credit cards away, our banking away. They're trying to destroy us. So uh, Jada Franson, jadafranson.online. Support us at InfoWarsStore.com. And you're awesome. And we love you to do reporting for us from the UK. If you can get together a camera crew or something, we'd love to try to sponsor you because I've got doing everything I can. All right, God bless you. We want to thank you so much. We'll be back with our number four. I'll be hosting part of it. Stay with us.